cuts right through me. I see, and that's funny. I don't find that, but... I bet there's someone else out there. If you filed your nails right into the microphone now, I bet other people would get creeped out. Probably. It can't just be me. I think nails gross me out in general. Yeah, you do... I wish we were just had smooth fingers. You do say you wish you just didn't have nails. Yeah, who needs them? I don't like being reminded of how organic I am. Right. Nails aren't as bad as teeth. Teeth are gross. I don't like to think about teeth. Because you just have like a hole in your oh, like meat head. Ugh. There's just a hole in your meat. And then like from that, a bunch of like calcified protuberances come out. And just like make hard things in your mouth, but they grow out of your like soft meat. Oh, gross. There's so many things that I just have never thought about that when you describe them like that, it's so gross. Yeah. Now everything is gross. The meat hole with teeth is gross. That's what we're, we're flapping our meat into the microphones right now. To make entertainment for people out on the internet. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, hello. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of I Love This. You should too. My name is Indy Meat Hole Randall. Oh, that's so <laughs> gross. Oh, that is really gross. That's awful. I hate it. And with me is Samantha Fingernails Randawa. I feel like that's an appropriate nickname for me. You do spend a lot of time on your nails. And you know what? I spend a lot of time on my teeth. Yeah. I spend so much time on tooth care because I'm uh, worried of my teeth falling out one day. That is one of my stress dreams is... Oh, I think it's everyone's. My teeth just falling out randomly. Yeah. And I can tell that like there's some stress happening in my life when I either dream that I'm awake and like sitting up in bed or that my teeth are falling out. See, I take it a little further. I'm constantly stressed in the real world of my teeth falling out. Yeah. Oh, see, I feel I feel like my throat's all blocked up, but it it would we're gonna go with it. And I have to I realize that I start off episodes in my customer service voice <laughs> because I'm like, Hey everyone, how's it going? And then by the end I, I talk in my normal register, which is actually down here, that I <laughs> need to start doing more often. It's like a it's like a slippery slope of voice change. It is. And then I have to edit it. And I'm like, why is my voice drastically <laughs> why do different? Why I sound like that? This? Yeah, it's true. Um, this, I've realized I just don't say words during the day because I work alone at home in the basement and I very rarely talk on the phone. So I just don't say words. And so I guess I was on vocal rest today. <laughs> And I don't stop talking at work. My yeah. work is constant talking and presenting and all sorts of stuff. And that's why it takes me a while to get out of my like, hey, I'm talking to kids voice. Yeah. And get back down here and talking about adult stuff like our teeth falling out. I do remember that about working in retail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the retail voice is similar. Yeah. Customer it's, service. Voice. It's a customer service voice. Teacher yeah. voice. Customer service voice. And the customer service face, which often if I do end up talking on the phone, I can like physically feel my face falling as I hang up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like you just hit the off switch and all of a sudden you're just like, huh. That's what we do back. when the podcast <laughs> is over. We just stop talking to each other. Our faces are just. Bleh. And then no more talking for the rest of the day. <laughs> But we should uh, start this episode. Yes. So today, Sam, you picked, you've been picking all of the themes, but you know what? I like it. I yeah. actually might have suggested this to you way back when. I think we were like, I don't know if it's going to fit in time-wise because obviously we always give a lot of space to Halloween, but um, it ended up working out that we're going to be able to do two movies in this theme. So, What is the theme? Our theme is Back to School. Oh no, my other stress dream. <laughs> True, yeah. Um, so it is September, everyone is on their way back to school, and um, I thought there's been a lot of really good media about school and back to school in September, and I thought, why not dedicate a month to it? Let's do it. <laughs> All the parents out there are, and you know, people in school. Yes, exactly. We could do the same. We can do the same. Well, let's get started. We're each going to do a spoiler-free little thing of the fortnight. Uh, that will also be school related? Yes. Question mark? Mine is school related. All right. And then you're going to tell us what we are going to watch for our big back to school watch for next week. 
And I have a theory that it is one of two movies, and we'll see if I'm correct. <laughs> you always guess right. No, that's not true. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I often guess right. You, like, we always say, you know me better than I know me. <laughs> You know what I was just about to say, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah. I know you better than you know yourself, baby. True, true. But then you were saying the same thing because I know you better than you know yourself. Yeah. And it happened, it happens like in our everyday life too, not just on the podcast. Which is good because you don't always have to finish your thoughts because I'm already there doing the thing that you were going to say. Exactly. Do you know me better than I know me? I don't think so, but I do know you pretty well. Pretty well. I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> we are married, so I should hope that I know you like pretty well. <laughs> I'd say pretty well is fair. Um, well, let's start it off. What do you got? What's your thing of the fortnight? Uh, so my school themed thing of the fortnight is the prime video show Class of 07, which is an Australian comedy uh, television series um, about a all girl high school 10-year reunion and then there is a huge natural disaster and their school that they're having the reunion at happens to be at the top of a mountain and so they are the only survivors they can find oh that's that's fun yeah wait what is what's the tone of this show because this could go a few different ways kind of wacky so it's a comedy it's a comedy it is a comedy like this tell me more so um this is a class of girls who graduated in 2007 who are coming back for their 10-year reunion they've obviously changed as one would in a decade and um a lot of things come back to haunt them from high school um the bullies have tried to become reformed one of the girls has gone on a reality dating television show um everyone basically has their own lives and they're forced back together and they're forced into this boarding school um or like forced back into this boarding school kind of era of their lives and um how they kind of have to band together to survive and the different kinds of things that come up from the past and also just because they have changed quite a bit how long does this show go is it a a season it's a season it came out in march of this year so march 2023 so i'm really hoping there's a second season because it's like it leaves it open it leaves it open it's like ready for a second season and i also got really attached to the characters and i really want to know kind of what happens next um and i like don't want to give it away but the end it's a cliffhanger you find out some information that um you are wondering about the entire season and then all of a sudden it ends and I remember being kind of upset about that at the end. <laughs> Does knowing what the natural disaster is ruin the show at all? No. So what basically there's a giant tidal wave and it rips all of Australia away. Um, oh, yeah, that's going to happen. Plunges it into the sea. It'll do that. And so basically they're stranded on an island. And luckily there's a giant school there. So they're able to um, like stay and it's a boarding school. So there's like rooms and kitchens and everything. But it's kind of a building on an island, essentially. Yes. Oh, and there fun, is, fun. Yeah. So you get to see them attempt to grow their own food. People are trying to fish. They like organize themselves in such a way that there's um, a team of people doing physical labor as well as like anybody who went into any kind of science field are working on getting like the generators going or figuring out how they can charge batteries so that they can have electricity. And so it's just like a total little like civilization that they build but they've got all these underlying things that happened to them in high school and um since that are very much at the surface and like coming to a head this sounds very good i'm very interested in this and i think i might end up watching it myself it's fun it's fun it's got some heavier moments because like it's supposed to be regular people who are experiencing this so you do get some heavier moments and you get to find out a little bit about what their lives were like at school and um there's a surprising twist in an episode five i think and uh they uh kind of have to come to terms with it And then it becomes even more like school. I love, I don't, I want to say, how do I say this? I don't 
I hate so much post-apocalyptic stuff. Yeah. Most of it's terrible. But I also love post-apocalyptic stuff <laughs> when it is people in a very real or like heightened way dealing mm-hmm. with it. Like I love the TV show Last Man on Earth. Yeah. I love the movie Last Man on Earth, <laughs> which is not related. I was going to say, are those, are, is there a movie I don't know about? <laughs> I uh, made a short called Last Man on Earth. Where I was the last man on earth. It's a classic trope. I I love it as a thought experiment. I love it as a way to bring out the essence of characters because everything gets like really boiled down when you're in a a situation like that. So I I like this premise so much that I think I'm going to go watch it. But if someone else is kind of on the fence of if they want to watch a show, what would you say to sway them over? Um, I'd say that it's a good example of what would happen if you were locked in your high school with the bully, the popular girl, the stoners. Um, It's like a post-apocalyptic breakfast club. Basically, yeah. And I think um, you get to see kind of the way that female friendships mature and um, just kind of what happens when young adults because they'd be like 28 i assume um and i'd say they're still young adults um that like what happens when they're left to their own devices and uh i think if you're looking for like a lighter more fun show this is definitely something that you can go to that has like a little bit of substance behind it still you know how i love shows that are set in uh, all girls schools do you yeah I love Dairy Girls. Oh, I yeah, love Facts right. of Life. Yeah. Um, if you could just continue that trend for 50 years, my other favorite show is Golden Girls. I yeah. love There's few shows that are based on female friendships that don't uh, devolve into fighting over a man at some point. Yeah. And I love when they have those. And it seems like there's no man in this no. one. So this could be that too. So yeah. I am very intrigued and I think I'm going to go check it out. Yeah. And where can we all watch this? Uh, so it is on Prime Video. It is eight episodes. They're 30 minutes each. I have watched three quarters of it just over again today. Oh, you're on your second watch. Yeah, because I thought I should like refresh myself. I watched it when it came out, but I haven't seen it since. And I was like, I should just like throw on an episode Way back, or two. like two months ago? In March. Oh, okay. So yeah, so I think it's like a quick, easy, fun watch and everyone should see it. <laughs> everyone. So get on it, everyone. Everyone get it. So Andy, what's your school themed thing of the week? Mine is the 1985, I want to say cult classic, Better Off Dead, which is a savage Steve Holland's directorial debut and stars a very young John Cusack. Oh. So if I just tell you the plot of this movie, it is the typical 80s high school movie because it's about a boy whose girlfriend breaks up with him and dumps him for the captain of the ski team because he's not as good as her. Wait, as is this him. a ski movie? Partially. Oh, so the okay. 80s, most, I'm going to say 50% of movies were tangentially a ski movie. Okay. And this is one of them. Now that I know about ski movies, I'm like... You're all in on them, huh? I, it was fun. Ski school? Ski school. It was, I think that's the only one we watched, Yeah, actually. but you've like... We watched the Always Sunny episode, which is ski school, which is yeah. ski school, and then you pointed out a bunch of other episodes in things that are also... skiing was big in the eighties. It really was. <laughs> uh, so, uh, John Cusack is our lovable lead. His girlfriend says, "You can't even ski the K twelve, so I'm dumping you for the captain of the ski team." So he's all distraught, but then he meets a sexy exchange student and she has a a heart of gold (laughs) and but then he's gonna go race the ski captain in a big climactic showdown and they're gonna race and if he wins is he gonna go back to his old girlfriend is he gonna go with this uh sexy exchange student with a heart of gold (laughs) who knows you do because it's a very typical plot right but in the midst of all that it's the weirdest movie you're going to see That still makes sense. (laughs) So it's not a parody of a teen comedy. It it follows the beats. It's not like making fun of 80s high school movies. It is an 80s high school movie, but it just has the strangest, absurdist, and surrealist comedy in 
an 80s teen comedy. Hmm. So the movie starts off, um, he tries to kill himself in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Oh my God. And continues to do so several times throughout the movie. What? And it's played like, sometimes it's played, well, I guess it's all played as a joke, but sometimes he comes to the realization of like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm young. I have my whole life ahead of me. But then he like, oh, accidentally hangs himself again. Oh. And then once he gets over that, he does try to kill himself with carbon monoxide. And that's going on throughout this. There are some like rival teens who are... They're played by Japanese actors, but the character names are like fake Korean names. So I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Uh. But they learned English from the wide world of sports. So they uh, dress in like yellow blazers and the guy talks like Howard Cosell and narrates everything through a speaker system in his car. And they're kind of like bullies, but a Howard Cosell bully. Do you know who Howard Cosell is? Not really, no. I guess that's dated. That's even before my time. But he's he's the guy who's like, this is Howard Cosell coming live to you from... He like has that sports Okay, caster. yeah, yeah. So the, he, they just talk like that and they're always trying to race him. But he has this crappy old station wagon. And he has a cool car, but of course it's not up and running until the French exchange student also knows how to fix cars. Oh, handy. It is. <laughs> Uh, his mother is always making like bad food, and you're like, oh, that's a funny joke. That's I've seen that before. And the first one, it's boiled bacon, haha. <laughs> but then it gets weirder and weirder. So sometimes she'll make something, and it'll start crawling around the plate, but no one really acknowledges it. Ew. And then sometimes she's in the background, and it, it's a straight horror movie, and there's giant tentacles coming out of the pot, and everyone nobody just ever, goes about their day. comments on that. No. Huh, okay. Like, Cusack doesn't really want to eat it, but it's just like, oh, this food again. But that's as far as it goes. Huh. But that's not even the weirdest food thing, because he is a teen, and he works in a hamburger joint, and at one point he's making a hamburger, and in a claymation sequence, the hamburger comes to life and sings a whole song. What? (laughs) That happens in it. Uh, He's constantly being harassed by the paper boy who wants $2, but is uh, like after him in a very Terminator style way. So that's going on. He has a seven-year-old brother who never talks, but is always reading how-to books. And then you just see him doing those things in the background. So at one point he's just making handguns. That's Uh going on. And then he gets a book delivered called... I think it's something like how to impress cheap women or something like ridiculous <laughs> like that. And then the next scene we see, there's like just nine women in his room. And we don't really need to address it any more than that. That's just... And then I think at the end, he builds a spaceship and maybe flies into space. It just goes to space. Yeah. Huh, okay. And he's seven. I feel like this movie was made just for those bits. I guess it's it's a like... bizarre movie. But somehow just coherent enough that it's not jarring. It's just like, what is happening there? It doesn't matter because we're in this nice, comfortable 80s high school teen comedy too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go check out uh, Better Off Dead. It's well loved by the people who know it and maybe not as well known as it should be. So if you want to go see a young John Cusack and a bunch of other people who actually I don't really know all that well, but... Go watch Better Off Dead. I'm not sure where you could find it. You guys know how to find movies. Or you can ask me and you can borrow my copy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It's a lot of good back to school content. Oh, yeah. And it's they go back to school. First day of school is, uh, I think, in the first 20 minutes of the movie. So he's going to school. So that's why yeah, it, it fits in. It's back to school. I like that. <laughs> okay. Now, it's up to you, Samantha. What is our first back-to-school movie we're going to be watching? Is it Clueless or Mean Girls? Because those are my two <laughs> picks that you would pick. Um, so you would be correct. Oh. It is the 2004 film Mean Girls. All right. I love this movie. I think I might watch it like every couple years. It's just like so well done. The jokes are still funny. And I think um, I just enjoy seeing, like, those four actresses in the beginning, like, when they were oh, younger. Because yeah, there's some of your real favorites yeah, are in so this, right? Yeah, so Lindsay Lohan, Rachel McAdams, Lacey Chaubert, and Amanda Seyfried, who is making her film debut in this. 
and she goes on to many, many more things. Um, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, um, Lizzie Kaplan. Uh, so oh, I forgot Lizzie Kaplan. Yeah, in there. she plays Janice. I, I don't remember. Who that That's is. okay. <laughs> you will in a bit. Um, so I think that this is so so well done. And then um, also Tina Fey wrote a musical that is wildly popular and on Broadway, and all of the music for it is just gold. So oh, did we watch that? No, we watched the we Heather's watched musical, Heather's, which I did not like. The Mean Girls musical is way 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 yeah. better. There's my uh, quick take. Heather's the movie, fantastic. Heather's the musical kind of forgets what the movie was about, apparently, and is yeah. backwards a little bit. Yeah. But back to Mean Girls. Yes. So I think um, we are going to have a fun time watching this and have a fun time recapping it next episode. And Tina Fey wrote as well, right? She wrote this, yes. And I, I do love Tina Fey. Um, She's one of my favorites. Yeah. I just like... I'm really excited to introduce you to maybe some of the music next episode as well. Oh, it's going to, is it going to be a twofer? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. Yeah. So does, do the people at home need to watch the musical? You can't watch the musical. There's no pro shop for it. Yeah, but you can watch the musical. Well, you can watch the musical. Do the people at home need to know the musical? We're just going to do the movie. We're just going to do the movie these. with like, if we're talking about certain plot points, I may throw to a clip of the song All right. that goes with it. So um, we will be watching the 2004 movie Mean Girls and uh, we'll meet you back here next week when we discuss how much we loved it.